Gold. Gold. Can you see me? See my reflection? All right. So I was going to do one of these sort of not all that actually similar to the uh, uh, what's made from oil video, but I was going to do one anyways for which metals and elements are inside your phone. Since, you know, I'm always talking about them in the podcast and uh, other videos all the time. So I figured I'd actually uh, take an old phone apart and show you what exactly is where and uh, what's what's made of what, which elements are found in what particular components. Me again. So starting off with the, uh, the screen, the glass at least, uh, covering it. Everybody knows that glass uh, contains silicon and oxygen, obviously. That's only partially true. Flat glass like this, and uh, like windows that are up there, obviously. Perfectly flat glass like this and those is a specific type of glass called soda lime glass, which means it's made from a mixture of sand, soda ash, lime from limestone, and also there's usually a little bit of fluoride uh, put in there as well as a flux material. So right there, just in the glass itself, you have silicon, oxygen, calcium, sodium, and fluorine or fluoride. And also, if uh, glass is really reflective, like really, really reflective, mirror-like reflective, that is from a uh, small coating or mix-in of silver inside the glass or just on the top of the outside. So there's also some silver in there as well. Granted, uh, there's more silver in various other components that we're about to dig into. Now right there, the uh, little light that will come on, either red, orange, or green, that little, uh, little tiny light right there is an LED, and the lights that uh, backlight the screen are also LEDs as is the uh, flashlight for the flashlight function. So the LEDs are obviously LED diodes, and LED diodes are composed of, in almost all circumstances, uh, depending on what color, there are different metals, but in almost all circumstances, it's gallium as the primary base material combined with, depending on what color you want to make, like indium, arsenic, aluminum, antimony, europium. So after the screen, throughout the, uh, the LED diodes, for the backlight of the screen, as well as uh, the light on the front that gives you your power level or tells you whether you have a message, and the, uh, the flashlight on the back, you basically almost have the whole slew of uh, rare earths sort of just in the LED diodes. Then in the battery back here, which uh, in this cheap model you can't actually remove, but in the battery back here you have a thin uh, steel shell, and steel is obviously a combination of iron, carbon, and manganese. Now within the battery, which uh, for phones is almost always a lithium-ion battery, so you have the cathode and the anode and the electrolyte. The electrolyte, in the case of lithium-ion, uh, that allows the electrons to go from one side to the other, obviously, uh, is lithium. And then for the cathode and the anode of the battery, one is graphite, which is primarily carbon, and the other is a mixture of nickel, cobalt, and manganese. And of course, obviously, with some copper inside as well. Right there, the uh, camera sensor, the photo sensor, or photoreceptor. There, you'll find more silicon. However, you will also find germanium. Not a huge amount in any particular one device or any particular camera lens, but there is some germanium in there. And here, the SIM card, phone's memory, you have a very, uh, very thin, a micro-thin layer, even sometimes nano-thin layer of gold coating on the uh, connector. And that's to ensure that there's no uh, interruption in the current flow, no disruption or corruption of the information. The current being uh, carried in electronics is uh, basically microcurrents and nanocurrents, so even the slightest bit of corrosion can interrupt them. So you need something that doesn't corrode, and uh, one of the best things for that is gold. And then inside, obviously, is where all the data and memory are written. Across bulk material silicon, however, also within there, however, also inside uh, the silicon wafer, or silicon chips, silicon semiconductors, there are nanoscopic, sometimes almost even picoscopic lines and pockets 
of injected dopant materials to alter the conductibility. Those materials primarily being phosphorus, boron, arsenic, and gallium. And before we actually go into the phone, obviously the phone was in a case. And the case is just plastic, which is, you know, a polymer of uh, various combinations of carbon and hydrogen. As well as uh, some nitrogen and sulfur likely mixed in in some places. Now, on the inside, you might notice something, and you'd be right. Look. Gold. 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 Oh man, looks like so much gold. Wrong. This whole thing only has about one seven hundredth of an ounce. So, you know, not exactly a money maker. You also see little tiny chips, little tiny processors there. The spider legs are the little connectors connecting them to the actual board. That is silver. And those things in between them that is probably really hard to see. I can't turn this camera into macro mode while filming. But uh, those things in there, those little things, uh, those are capacitors, which the point of capacitors is to receive and store a charge while the current is flowing and then uh, discharge it in the absence of a current. Which for electronics, since that current is, you know, really small, it's really easy to disrupt it. Granted, those disruptions are, you know, milliseconds, microseconds. So the capacitors, whether in a phone or a computer or anything else, when there's suddenly an absence of current, they will release their built up charge for that uh, tiny micro fraction of a second until it's restored from whatever the disruption was. In the capacitors, I wish I had like an actual microscope, but the capacitors on either side is typically silver or platinum and the sort of chalky brown part in the middle is tantalum ceramic. So it's the not abundant metal tantalum which, like cobalt, is also mined predominantly in the Congo. Now, down here, this thing here is actually a motor. This is your vibrator motor that allows your phone to vibrate. So it has an uneven weight attached to it. So the motor will spin, and uh, the weight spinning around, since it's not evenly balanced on either side, will basically cause the motor to shake. And the motor is obviously attached to the board, which is which basically is the phone, so that'll shake the entire phone. Now the weight and the shell of the motor obviously are steel. Again, iron, carbon, and manganese. And for steel motor parts, even for a small one, it actually is a stronger alloy. It's not just iron, manganese, and carbon. There is also likely a bit of molybdenum and niobium in there as well. Now for the motor itself, it obviously has a bunch of copper wiring and also really tiny magnets, but those rare earth magnets, as we discussed in a previous episode when talking about uh, rare earth magnets for motors, they're usually referred to as neodymium magnets. However, they're not just pure neodymium. They're actually kind of like steel with magnet. Neodymium is, you know, the iron, it's the bulk material. But to make a magnet that won't sort of uh, crack apart or overheat, you need, you need to mix in other stuff as well. So it's neodymium mixed in with about, I think, usually 6% dysprosium and a few percentage points of a generic mixture of, of praseodymium, terbium, and holmium. And I'll try to, and I'll try to actually spin it for you, the weight, so you can see. Yeah, see there? That's the weight on the outside, and it's, it's not a complete thing. It's unbalanced, the weight. It has a bunch of weight on one side, only a tiny bit on the other. So it spins around like that, and that obviously causes the motor itself to wobble, which causes the phone to wobble. There's some more gold. Oh, look at that shiny gold. Look at all that shiny gold. Gold, gold, gold. So much gold that it's worth about uh, two bucks, actually probably closer to $2.50 at current prices. It's one seven hundredth of an ounce per cell phone is about how much gold is in there. For a computer, it's a bit more. It's about 1 40th of an ounce. So the amount of gold in my laptop, for example, which, no offense, I love you guys and all, but I'm not taking apart my laptop for you. But as opposed to the $2.50 or so in the cell phone, the gold in that laptop or in any other computer is uh, closer to about 40 or 45 bucks. Just in case you wanted to see 
what the uh, the inside of the motor would look like. This is a larger motor from a old broken shaving razor, but inside the motor there's a magnet on that side. You can see it there, and there'd be one on the other side as well, but I took it out. Here it is. This is what a rare earth magnet looks like. This right here is about 90% neodymium, 6% dysprosium, and the other percentage is a assorted jumble of terbium, praseodymium, and holmium. There you go. Now, I myself was not actually certain what uh, these covers were. I was pretty sure they're probably steel, but they might be aluminum, but we can check. Oh, they're aluminum. No stick. All right, so these shiny, so these shiny, I actually should have been able to tell that from the smoothness, but these shiny covers right here, covering over some parts of the uh, the inside of the phone. Those are aluminum, so you also have aluminum in there. And on this particular model, you had, uh, uh, you had some more hydrocarbons, some nice flammable glue resin back there that was holding the battery in place. Lithium ion battery being held in place by some nice flammable glue. Don't do drugs, kids. So this is uh, the other side. This is the underside. And you can see there, you have some more aluminum covers and there's some more chips and processors and capacitors there on the other side. Let's show those for a second. And also the, uh, and also the board itself is a uh, kind of acrylic resin. So that's also a hydrocarbon mixture so you got plenty of carbon, hydrogen, and also probably some nitrogen and sulfur in there. Now I don't have any real way to take it apart, so I'm just going to point to where it is. But there, behind that, uh, out here in the front, the the speaker, sound generator, that that is also a magnet. It's basically a much smaller version of what's in headphones or in computer or laptop speakers or car speakers. It is a micro thin wire wound up around a flat pancake-like cylindrical magnet that is uh, typically a combination of neodymium and samarium. So you also have samarium in there. The phone interprets the signals, uh, sends a varying type of current to the speaker, and as the current changes, the wire just moves ever so slightly in all kinds of tiny amounts every microsecond because of the influence of the magnetic field. And as the wire is forced to move and oscillate, it vibrates a resonating membrane. And that resonating membrane is what makes the sound that you hear. And for the actual screen itself, the actual display, that is a special material called indium tin oxide that allows for that uh, current to flow across there and uh, be manipulated and also be interrupted by touching. And I don't think I can pry the screen unit out, but I am going to try uh, just so you can see it but you'll find out in about two seconds whether I succeeded or not. All right, so I wasn't able to actually uh, rip the screen unit out of there, but it is a pallet of indium tin oxide and uh, being backlit or rather kind of sidelit from tiny little LEDs sort of all around the frame. And that's basically everything that I could find was already aware of or could think of off the top of my head. So that's the general ensemble of uh, what's inside your phone. And for the most part, the same stuff is inside computers also. Thanks for watching this more out of the way video. Like if you enjoyed, like always, PayPal, Patreon in the description and the top comments. Only use either of them if you're actually able to, obviously. But may God bless you all, and I will see you all around next time.